Welcome back guys, moving on to the next question. We have a work problem here. So John traveled 1,780 kilometers from his home in Eastern Ontario to Winnipeg. He drove to Toronto at an average speed of 70 kilometers per hour. And then from Toronto, he flew to Winnipeg at an average speed of 600 kilometers per hour. So the total trip took six and a half hours. How many kilometers was traveled by car? And then how long was the flight? So notice there's two questions within this problem. And notice that both questions are actually asking for something different. So notice the first question is asking for a distance. The distance that was traveled by the car. And then the second is how long was the flight? So the second question is asking for time. So to show what's going on here, let's say that uh, this is John's home here. A portion of the trip he drove by car to Toronto and then from Toronto he flew to Winnipeg. So for this portion for the drive, notice that the average speed was 70 kilometers per hour. And then this from Toronto to Winnipeg was a flight. And then the average speed of that flight was 600 kilometers per hour. So we're given the speeds for both, the average speeds for both parts of the trip. Notice there's two parts of the trip. There's a part where he drove, a part where he flew. But we're not given the time of each part or the distance of each part. We're given the total time, which is six and a half hours, and we're given the total distance. So the total distance from his home to Winnipeg is 1,780 kilometers. And then the total time of this trip was six and a half hours. But we don't know what the time and the distance is for each portion. That's what we're going to have to figure out. And so there's actually two different ways to do this. So you can let the variables, we're going to have to introduce two variables. We can let X and Y either be the distance of each portion or the time of each portion. So I'll show you how to set up both ways. So if we let it be the time, so let X equal the driving time and let Y equal the flight time. If we let X and Y be that, X is the driving time and then Y is the flying time. So actually the answer for Y, what we solve for in Y, is actually going to be the answer for the second question. How long was the flight? That's the same as the flight time. So if we let X and Y be the time, we know just in general that distance equals what? Speed times time. So notice that X is the time for driving, Y is the time for flying, and we know the total time of the trip was six and a half hours. So we know X plus Y then has to equal 6.5. And notice that the distance, we can create a distance expression for the distance driven and the distance flown using speed times time. So it would be the speed, 70, times the time, which is x. So the distance driven would be 70x, and then the distance flown would be 600y, right? Speed times time. So one more time, the distance driven, the distance, not the time, the time is just x, but the distance driven would be 70x. The distance flown would be 600y, while the time flown is just y. So this is the distance driven, this is the distance flown, and we know the total distance is 1780. So notice 70x plus 600y would equal 1780. That would be the other equation. So now notice that we have two equations and two unknowns and we could solve for them using substitution or elimination. So that's if we let X and Y be the times. But another way you can set this up 
is you can let x equal the driving distance. And we can let y equal the flight distance. So instead of x and y being a time, we can let x and y be a distance as well. And if we do that, so pretend this x, I'm going to erase this over here. Pretend this x and this y, they are distances now. So this is x kilometers, this is y kilometers. Well, we know the total distance is 1780, so we would have x plus y equals 1780 kilometers. And then notice that we can create an expression for each of these times because since distance equals speed times time, well, if we isolate for time, divide both sides by s, that's distance over speed. And if x is the driving distance and the speed is 70 kilometers per hour, that means that the time, the driving time, is going to be x over 70, distance over speed. And then the flight time would be y over 600, this distance over that speed. Right? These would be the two times here. This would be the driving time. This would be the uh, flight time. Right? Those are the two expressions for the respective times using time equaling distance over speed. And we know the total time is six and a half hours, so we can just add these. X over 70 plus Y over 600, and that's going to be six and a half, like that. So if we let x and y be distances, this would be the set of equations, right? And what we're going to get, actually, uh, the first question is how many kilometers was traveled by car? That would be the x value we're solving for. That would be this x, right? So this would give us, the x and y here would give us the distances. And then if we wanted to get the flight time, what we would do is we would take the y value that we get and divide it by 600 to get the flight time over here. Versus in this set, how long was the flight? That's going to be y. And then if we want to get how many kilometers was traveled by car, that would be the 70x. Remember, that's the uh, expression for the distance traveled by the car. So whatever x value we get, that would be the time driven by the car. 70, the speed times the time, would give us the distance of the car. Right, so two very different ways to go about it, but nevertheless, the final answers for this question and this question should be the same. Even though the x and y you're gonna get are gonna be different, this is gonna be a time, this is gonna be a distance. Once you bring it back to the actual scenario, the kilometers driven by the car and the flight time should be the same. So out of these two, the one I'm going to work with, the one I feel like is easier to work with is this one over here. Because notice this one has fractions. What you would want to do with this one is notice 70 times 600, that would give us what? 42,000. So you would want to multiply this by 42,000, multiply this by 42,000, and then multiply this by 42,000. So then 70 goes into 42,600 times, so you'd have 600x plus 600 goes into 42,070 times, so 70y. Then 42,000 times 6.5, not sure what that would be, but that would be some kind of value. So we would convert that to this, and then we could just do substitution or elimination, I think substitution would be easier. Isolate for this x or that y, and then plug it in here. And then you could solve like that. But instead of dealing with these fractions, I'm just going to take this system of equations here and then solve for the respective times. So from here, from this system of equations, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to isolate for the y. So notice that I could bring the x over. So y would be 6.5 minus x. Then I'm going to take this, plug it in for this y, so I'll have 70x plus 600 times 6.5 minus x equals 1780, like that. 
And then from here, notice that we have one variable to solve for. So we can distribute. So we'd have 70x plus 600 times 6.5 would give us 3,900 minus 600x would be 1,780. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 1,780 over, and then I'm going to bring the 600x over and the 70x over. So we'll have 3,900 minus 1,780 equals 600x minus 70x, like that. So we would end up having, um, this would end up being what? Uh, 2,120, right? 3,900 minus 1,780 is 2,120. 600x minus 70x would give us 530 x like that. And now we could just divide both sides by 530 and we would get x equaling 4. And x, if you remember, I actually erased uh, what I let the variables, uh, variables be, but x is the driving time. So that's how long John drew our, uh, yeah, drove from Eastern Ontario to Toronto and then from Toronto to Winnipeg he flew and to solve for the flight time it's easiest to just use this equation right x plus y equals 6.5 well if x is 4 that means y has to be 2.5 so that's the flight time so that's actually the answer to the second question. How long was the flight? Two and a half hours. But notice that the first question is asking how many kilometers was traveled by car? So we know distance equals speed times time. We know the average speed with the car was 70. And then the time for the car was four. So the distance traveled by car was 2,000 or um, 280 kilometers rather. So 280 kilometers was the distance by car. And then this was the driving time. And then um, they didn't ask for the distance by plane, but if we wanted the distance by plane, we would just take the 600 kilometers per hour, the speed of the plane times the two and a half hours, and that would give us uh, 1,500. Kilometers. So this would be the distance, the plane, or the flight distance, in case they ask for it. So the flight distance, flight time, driving distance, driving time. And actually, if you solve the other system of equations that I had before, where we let x and y be the distances, we let x be the driving distance, so you would actually get 280 for that x value and then 1500 for the y value because that was the flight distance. So I recommend actually just practicing. Solve that other system of equations and these should be your two solutions. And notice that would be the answer. Um, 280 would be the answer for the first question and then to get how long was the flight, to get the flight time, it was um, the expression for that was y over 600 right? The flight distance, the plane distance, 1500 over the flight speed, which was 600. 1500 divided by 600 gives you 2.5. So that's how you'd get that if you did it the other way, right? So whichever way you do it, um, this is the distance traveled by the car. And that right there is how long the flight was.